If you could choose one pile for a snack, which one would you choose? I know what I would want. Hey! Well, let's get started. My name is Wesley Samko. I am the Adventist Mission Director for the Southern Asia Pacific Division. Adventist Mission is about planting churches in unreached people groups. I would like to take a few minutes to talk to you about the 1040 window. There are three things everyone should know. First, what is the 1040 window? The 1040 window describes a rectangular shaped region of the world map in the Eastern Hemisphere, roughly between the 10th and 40th Northern lines of latitude. It includes North Africa, the Middle East, and parts of Asia. The term 1040 window originated with Lewis and Doris Bush in 1990 to refer to the 57 countries of the world with the most socioeconomic challenges and the least exposure to Christianity. This list is now expanded to 68 countries by joshuaproject.net and 69 by the Seventh-day Adventist Church since it recognizes Sudan and South Sudan separately. One of the mission objectives for the Adventist World Church I Will Go strategic plan is to strengthen and diversify Adventist mission outreach in large cities, across the 1040 window, among unreached and underreached people groups, and to non-Christian religions. Second, mission to the 1040 window faces huge challenges. If the whole world's population was represented by 10 people, then a little more than six and a half of those people would live in the 1040 window. In real life, we can't chop someone in half, so think of them as maybe living on the border. If we represent all the people in the world who are reached by, or who have access to, the gospel, around four and a half would live in the 1040 window. But for the unreached, that number jumps up to over nine and a half of our world's unreached. The 1040 window is also home to the majority of the non-Christian faith groups and ideologies. Again, thinking of the world's population as a group of 10, nearly all 10 Hindus would live in the 1040 window. It's over nine and a half of 10 for Buddhists and over nine and a half of the world's Muslims. Surprisingly, it's also over nine and a half for the world's non-religious people. Eight out of 10 of the world's ethnic or animist religions would also be here. What about Seventh-day Adventists? Only a little more than one in 10 of the world's Adventists called the 1040 window home. There are many other challenges in the 1040 window it's home to the majority of the megacities of the world, including over 50% of the world's least reached cities. It's also home to tremendous socioeconomic challenges, such as being home to over 80% of the world's abject poor. We could spend a lot more time here, but let's keep moving to our last point. Third, mission to the 1040 window lacks resources. Many of you like me enjoy a good cookie if I had the choice to snack on cookies over onions, the cookies would win every time. But does that mean I should keep all the cookies for myself? Let's use cookies to represent a few of the church's resources. If we look at all the ordained Adventist pastors of the church, more than eight and a half out of 10 serve outside the 1040 window. That's less than one and a half cookies for the 1040 window. Unfortunately, the hoarding of cookies doesn't stop there. The numbers are almost the same when it comes to Adventist churches and only slightly better when it comes to companies. It is most startling when it comes to institutions. Over 9.6 out of 10 of the world's Adventist institutions are serving the most reached parts of the world. We aren't even gonna talk about tithes and offerings for mission. However, I will say one thing. What happens if you eat too many cookies? In the end, no one is healthy. So, what can you do? The most important thing that any of us can do is to pray fervently and intentionally. There are seven missional prayers you can pray. You can pray these daily or one per day. They not only change you, they will change the reality in the 1040 window. Pray for the Holy Spirit and for personal restoration. Pray for selfless love for others 
that God will give you a heart for a specific region of the 1040 window. Pray for biblical boldness, that you will learn to engage, give, and pray boldly and without fear. Pray for territory and choose a specific part of the 1040 window and pray for the people, the powers, both seen and unseen, and for God to send workers to establish His presence. Pray for dreams, visions, signs, and wonders to be given to the people. Pray for understanding, wisdom, and discernment for those working in and supporting mission in the 1040 window. Pray for witness opportunities for those engaged in mission and for people of peace, those local people who God is preparing to be local disciple makers to their social network. Second, we can engage. More than ever before, people born in the 1040 window are living as refugees and as immigrants in almost every country of the world. You can engage directly by befriending, learning about, helping, and sharing stories about God with people from the 1040 window living near you, whether you live in the 1040 window or anywhere else in the world. As they see God through you, they in turn will begin to share what they are discovering with their friends and family still living in the 1040 window, many of whom have no other exposure to the hope that comes through the gospel and soon coming of Jesus. Finally, you can support. If resources are going to be allocated to the 1040 window, it begins with each one of us. You can intentionally set money aside for the 13th Sabbath offering projects in the 1040 window, the annual sacrifice offering which supports mission, and directly for global mission projects. Simply write GC Global Mission Projects on your tithe envelope or in the appropriate slot on your church's online giving platform, and your offering will go directly to frontline global mission projects. With new tools in 2021 to prioritize resources for unreached people groups, large urban cities, and the 1040 window, resources given to frontline global mission projects operated directly by the Seventh-day Adventist Church are more focused than ever before. By giving systematically to frontline global mission projects through the Seventh-day Adventist Church, you can help change this into this. God calls us to witness and to make disciples. Let's strive together to bring the light of eternity and the hope of Jesus' soon return to the most unreached and challenging part of the world, the 1040 window.